1,000 students. Some of them are full-time, lots of them are part-time. I've uh, got over uh, 1,700 staff, um, 52 million pound annual turnover, loads of courses, 1,500. Some of those are part-time courses, some of those are short courses, so quite a lot. And we're one of the biggest colleges in the UK. Uh, so the six centres, obviously lots of six um, different opportunities. Our centre uh, itself uh, in Leamington, unfortunately it's tucked behind there. Uh, just to give you a bit more perspective, um, the UK itself is a small place. Um, London down here, we are up here and we've got Birmingham very close to us. So we're in what we call the Midlands of England. Uh, very good uh, connections by road and rail. So, for instance, if you want to go down to London and see the sights by train, it takes around an hour and 20 uh, minutes by train. So, very easily, very accessible if you want to go and see the sights in London and then uh, come back again. All right? So, ideally located. Um, one word of caution is that England is, is not cheap, it's not the cheapest uh, Kuwait. So always be careful of what you're spending your money on because it could quickly go. Uh, the college, as I say, has gone through uh, lots of changes. This is our Leamington site. Even though it looks nice, it's changed from that. It's got much bigger. This uh, building over here, that is what it is. Uh, it's not been changed. It's the place that we do English, our English teaching. Right? Everyone here on a Monday certainly will do English and we aim to get your IELTS higher. Uh, we will pay for one IELTS test. If you feel that you need to do more to get to a higher IELTS, then you will pay for it yourself. Right? But we'll give you uh, one free one and the rest of it is up to you. Right? What I would strongly suggest is go and take as many IELTS as you possibly can. Right? Because in the future, when uh, an employer or uh, a university says, well, we really want IELTS 6 or 6.5, if you haven't got it, you're not going to get that job or you're not going to get that um, good university place. So while you've got the opportunity, that's really go for it, right? Because uh, that's what it's really all about. Right? Let's get as much qualifications as you possibly can. What we try and do then, we have got three major uh, areas that we as a college look at. We put you, the learner, first. It's your needs that we really cater to, but also we have standards. You know, we're not going to say, come through the door today, leave by the door tomorrow and we're going to give you a certificate. Somewhere between entering the door and leaving there's going to be a bit of learning somewhere mm -hmm. right? and which is down to you but also down to our teachers to make sure they are getting you through the course to the right level all right? and the expectations there. So high quality, yeah we believe in a high quality because you know, there's no second chance in getting high quality. Yeah, anyone around the world can produce poor quality, but think for yourself in five, ten years' time. An employer will want the highest possible caliber of staff they can, they can get. If you've got poor quality education, you haven't put yourself out, you expect everything to be laid on a plate, well, there are thousands, if not millions, of people like that. Don't want them. We want good people who are able, ready, and willing to put yourself out for the highest qualification, the highest quality, and have that can-do approach. Right? And if you are can't do, won't do, give it to me. Tough. People are going to find it difficult. So we believe that high quality is with you, but it's for you to really be hungry to want it and need it because I'm going to be a boss, I'm going to earn thousands of KD a week, and 
I'm courting. All right, so believe in that. And we also uh, promote fair, open, and respect of culture as well. All right, respect of culture is very important because we've got lots of students from, I think, about 42 different countries. Uh, and across here, we've got to give respect and understand culture as well. And we expect that the other way around as well. All right, so we are uh, an international college, and uh, without respect and understanding, you know, we will go nowhere. And let's face it, the world nowadays is a multicultural society. We live, we work, and obviously, thank, thank God, you can understand English. Um, I've got a problem with uh, English myself. Uh, well, I'm English. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we do live in a very, very much of a global organization now. And yeah, we need to be part of it. So, so respect for culture, very important. Right, so some people say, oh, well, I'm an international foundation. What the hell is an international foundation? Right, to give it some perspectives then, it's equivalent to A-levels. Are you familiar with A-levels? Some people may be, some people may not be. Right, A-levels are what we call a level three qualification. In, in the UK, here we have different levels of qualifications. Right, a level three is um, is a good uh, qualification to finish at high school before you go on to university. So an international level or international foundation program is a level three. Right, it's one year, and as it says there, it's for students who have graduated from high school but need additional support in the English language, study skills, and also the subject knowledge as well. So most of you are probably going to be doing engineering, so you're going to get a good grounding in a foundation of engineering. Same with business, same with politics and law. You're going to get a good understanding of what those subjects are all about before you go on to your next stage at university. Uh, grades are percentage graded. Uh, so some universities may say, oh, we want uh, engineers, for instance, here, we want 60% uh, maths. Because you've got to understand the, the mathematical concepts of engineering. If you cannot add two and two together, you're going to find it very, very difficult in engineering. Because, uh, oh yeah, what's the uh, pressures and the stress of, uh, of this cable? And uh, I'm building bridges, and if I don't add up and take away and multiply and things like that, you are going to, you're not going to be an engineer. Right? So you've got to make sure your maths are very good. Um, one of the things that we're doing this year, um, instead of having three terms, because a lot of students have already started in September and will finish in June. You are going to start in January and finish in June, which means that the course, whichever course you're on, is going to be pretty intensive. And as what I said a minute ago, you've got to have that can-do approach. I want it, I'm hungry, I'm going to get it. Now, it does mean that you are going to have more hours than those who started in September, right? Because they're, yeah, a few months ahead of you. The team, you're not going to be mixed in with uh, the other groups. You're going to be, you know, all by yourselves in Leamington, lots of hours. And what we do need is your undivided attention to be in class 100% of the time. Right? Because it's going to be hard work, hard going, but really worth it at the end of the day. Right? So it's for two terms only. The term, as we'll see in a short while, will go from January through to April, I think it is, and April through to June. Just two terms. You have a bit of a break in the middle called Easter, uh, where you have two weeks off, uh, so you can rest and relax, and you have what we like to have called a half term as well. So they have a week off in uh, February and a week off in May, just to catch up with things. But we do expect for those two terms, everyone to be there in all classes, rather than thinking, oh, I got, oh, I got police registration. Fine, we'll get the police in, which is a police registration. Okay, can't get away with that one. Um, oh, um, I, I, I need to go and find different accommodation, don't like the one. Well, okay, but 
one of the things that you will find is that, and this is what we've uh, asked you to complete the forms for homestay, is to find your own private accommodation is going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible. Right? Because again, when we thought, saw that map, we are in the Midlands of England. We are very close to Birmingham and Coventry, etc. Those places have universities as well as other colleges. Lots of their students start in September, and most of the private accommodation has already been taken. So that's why we have strongly, strongly recommended homestay is probably the best because A, you can have a roof over your head. Um, whether you go uh, self-catering or you're going to get say, your food um, you know, prepared for you, it's only for six months. And most people would be able to cope just for six months. So you don't have to worry about accommodation. If, as when you find some of your um, other colleagues who start in September, trying to go and get a contract to sign up a contract. Most of them are for about a year in uh, tenancy. So in other words, you've got to sign a contract for a year. Some people, well, everyone's going to finish in June. And what about July, August to September? They still got to pay those three months when they're not going to be around, wasting money. All right, so homestay is the best. And I say it's only for six months really is. Uh, for international foundation, minimum age, uh, 17. Uh, we do require an IELTS 5 because the program is in English, so it will gain the understanding. Uh, good grades and say 33 hours a week, so it's going to be yeah, pretty intensive. Right? One of the other good things about our college is we have an IELTS centre. Right? So we when you're ready, we will put you in for an IELTS test. Right? So you don't have to think, oh my god, I've got to go down to London to do an IELTS uh, test. No, um, it's in a different town called Rugby, which our IELTS centre is, but it's under our control. Right? So you will be able to do that uh, very, very easily. And when you're ready, we'll put you in for that. Now, this is the important bit from the cultural office people who are paying for you to come to the UK and paying you some money every month, so £1,900. Right, so one of the things that we've got to bow down to for the culture office is that uh, they want to check on two things, your attendance and your progression. There is a very, very strong correlation for, uh, for those in the past that who have not attended their progression is pretty poor. And I came across in July to do resets for some people because their attendance was rubbish. Right? And of course, if you're not in class, how are you going to learn? And again, I strongly emphasize that this is an intensive course. You cannot afford to miss one hour, let alone, oh, I'm ill for two days. I mean, I had some wonderful excuses uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, can't be in class today. Um, I'm finding furniture for my, uh, my uh, apartment. Sorry, you have plenty of time during the weekends and evenings to go and get your furniture. Don't miss class. So I threw that to the cultural office. Literally in the afternoon on the same day, can't be in class today. And I was thinking, oh yeah, we're looking at his attendance, it's not very good anyway. Uh, I'm in Liverpool. Liverpool, because that's in the northwest of England. Why on earth are you in Liverpool? Well, I'm going to watch a football match between Liverpool and Real Madrid. And I think, oh my god, you can't find your way to class, but you can find your way to Liverpool. Yeah, um, so again, threw that to the cultural office and said, deal with it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we've got to make sure people are in class because if if we don't make sure people are in class, the cultural office are really going to be angry with us and also with you. Now, last year, some people didn't have very good uh, attendance, and so they took £500 off of their salary. 
And all I get then was people coming down to me, Alan, help me, fix it for me. And I'm thinking, okay, now you've seen that film Back to the Future, where you get in a DeLorean car and go back in time and start all over again. We can't do that. Uh, you have made your own choice by not attending class, so therefore you've got to start the consequences. Nothing I can do about it. So if you are going to be um, missing class, on a monthly basis, I've got to report attendance to the cultural office. They will see who has been around, who hasn't been around, go along and say, well, hang on, there is a pattern here. People don't like Monday mornings and Friday afternoons. Too much of a coincidence. There goes the money. Right. And then I'll guarantee people will come to me. That's probably what will happen uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Alan, fix it for me. Yeah. No, there's no fixing. You've done it. It's your choice. Suffer the consequences. Or in other words, grow up. This is it. This is life. Uh, the cultural officers have also been a little bit harsh, I think harsh this year, uh, because uh, for those people who are on a three-term program, they said if attendance is not 85% over two terms, there is no third term. They are on their own, they're not paying the fees, you get no money, back to Q8. No course passed and will not be able to reset again. Maybe harsh, but then again, when you look at it from if you were an employer, it's pretty fair. If you were an employer and half your staff didn't bother to turn up for work, would you be happy to pay them? Probably not. So the cultural office have been a bit harsh on uh, the three-term program, and will be equally as harsh on the two-term program. So again, the minimum, a minimum, absolute minimum, of 85%, ideally 100%, minimum 85%, because uh, in May, when we uh, do, uh, well, when we have the half term, if you're not 85%, you don't finish your course. Not my rules, their rules, all right? Or your, your embassy's rules. So make sure, please, please make sure that every class you attend. And don't think I've not heard all the excuses. I've heard many, many excuses, and I don't think I will uh, hear a, a different excuse. Uh, so, as I said there, uh, the Curated Cultural Office only uh, will approve a tier two, uh, two terms, and I'm not paid for a third term for those who have been on a third term, a three term course. Registers take every class reports every month to the cultural office and every class to be uh, attended. Okay, you can see what's paid around this. Uh, attendance has got to be 85%, cannot miss class, and accommodation, as I say, has to be hosted. Right? As I said, you will find it extremely difficult for a private uh, accommodation. Right? If, if you are lucky enough to find private accommodation, uh, you've, you've still got to pay a mo one month for homestay accommodation, absolute minimum. Uh, but as I say, you will probably find it really, really hard to find a private accommodation for the length of time that you're going to be in the Right, so when do we go for it? Right, the teaching starts on the 7th of January. Which means, ideally, we'd love to see you 5th or 6th of January. Right, before we actually start teaching. Which means that we've got to do a lot of paperwork with you, give you, oops, give you our timetables, we've got to make sure that you've got police registration done, sure that you, know, you arrive and you go to your host family. Lots and lots of things to be done. Right? And we really don't want to take time out of teaching to do that. Now, those of you who've got uh, your 
um, your CAS letters from already, will notice that I've been generous to some extent to say that the latest day we can accept you is the 12th. Well, it gives you a little bit of time to play around with, but ideally we need to see you the 5th or the 6th of January so you can be in class being taught on the 7th. Okay? Because again, you know, we can't, can't afford this time. Don't be like some people uh, who started in September thinking, uh, oh, I've got the CAS letter, oh, loads of time to go and get my visa, I'll wait. You know, because I've got lots of time to wait. Well, everyone else thinks that as well. Because uh, there are some universities starting a January course, colleges starting a January course, and it may take a fair bit of time <coughs> before you get your interview for your visa. So once you've got your visa letter, go get an interview quick. At least it seems you're running around or waiting uh, because you're not the only one. Everyone else would do exactly the same. So make sure that you get the visa very, very quick. Um, we do have a half term, as I mentioned, where there are no classes. That's Monday, the 16th to the 20th of February. Right? You don't have to be in class, you can make a bed, do whatever you want. Go down to London, see the sights, go up to Scotland, see the snow. Um, so you've got a week off. Um, but we do start again, and we will finish on the 27th of March, uh, which will be good, because then, we actually start on the 13th of April. So between the 27th of March to the 13th of April, you're free. So if something may, may want to come home, great. Go on top of your parents for some more money. Um, or stay in the UK, equally fine, no problems. But you still have to pay your host family. Right? So yeah, that's one thing. Um, but uh, you've got two weeks, basically, that is your own to do it as you wish. But again, we do expect people on the 13th of April to be in class. Not decide that 13th of April, oh well, it doesn't matter, I'll fly on the 14th. Well, your attendance will go down. Now, if you're not in class, and remember we do the registers, if you're not there, your attendance tends to go that way. And please don't come to me and say, fix it for me. You've made that choice. Right. So again, we have another half term. Uh, on the 25th of May to the 29th of April, we've got another free week. But in the UK, we also have a public holiday, which is uh, Monday the 4th of May. All right, so we have a long weekend. Right? And we finish all courses on the 26th of June, right? which means you fly home, either at 10 o'clock at night there's a flight on the 26th of June uh, from Heathrow to Kuwait. Uh, so when people say to me, oh, I've got to go home at this time. Yeah, why? Do you want me to tell you the timetables of Kuwait Airways or British Airways? Because I know them. Right. Um, ideally, though, uh, fly home the day after. Right. Because by the time you finish, pack, etc., take your time. Don't be in a rush. Uh, go home uh, on the 27th of June. Home will still be here. It's not going to go away. So that's what we have to do. So please, 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 do not come to me and say, "Oh, I've been here five and a half months. I want to go home first of June." <laughs> yeah, I'm in your dreams. Right? Uh, because you've still got to pass the course, there may be some assignments that you've got to do, like some exams you've got to do. Whatever you have to do, you've got to do it. Simple as that, because the cultural office know our exam, sorry, know our term times, and they will, will be expecting everyone to be attending right up to the very end. Alright, so please, please, follow the rules. Yeah, say not totally set by us, but by uh, the cultural office. So some of the basic things that we need to consider, and there are basic rules. Um, 
Right, as we have said, attend all classes. Please attend all classes. I feel all the excuses on why we shouldn't attend classes. Um, if you can come up with um, uh, a unique one, which is very, very plausible, I might listen to it. But 99.99% I will listen to it. You have to be where you should be. All right. uh, do all the work to the required standard. By that, don't do as some people have done in the past of, oh, I've got a sign to do. Um, you took me a sign, will you? And these two will copy it. No, because the teachers are pretty well trained to know, I've read this, hang on, I've read this again, word for word. Uh uh, that doesn't work. So all three of you will fail. Uh, but make sure it is your own work, your standard, your work which you are proud of, not someone else's work which you think, well, that will do. Be my turn next time to do the assignments. No, make sure this is your own work, right? Because, again, the teachers have been around a lot of years. They know what they've read, they know the books, and they know if it's been copied and pasted as well. So. Make sure it's your work which you are proud of. Um, and as I said, they'll take pride in any um, in the achievements. Right, progression. Right, we've talked to a number of universities um, this week. Um, we're always talking to universities. Universities, like any institute, want good students. And the good students will be. Oh, what's the pass rate? Because this is what we need. What's their attendance like? Uh, what's their attendance like? Because again, we want students who've got good grades and have been around all the time. And again, because you're all here and you don't want to let easy steps down and you don't want to let me down. Uh, because I'm not sure about the reference. Certainly don't want to let me down. Uh, we're hoping that everyone here will be doing as required because we would love you all to go to the university of your choice. So please again, as I've been saying all the time and as I will say when you come to the UK, make sure your attendance is up, make sure um, your progress is good because without each other, progression is going to be difficult. Because if we let you through uh, and you go off to a university and the university after a few weeks says what the hell have we got here? We said that these students are got this and they got that and meet range of requirements but they can't tell one of a pen from the other, they can't find their way to class, the students are totally rubbish, we don't want anybody at all in the future from easy steps. Not good for either of us. So be very, very aware that we don't want to be at that. Right? So make sure you do as required. <laughs>